Warning, this video and all other videos on this channel are for entertainment purposes only. The content of this video and all other videos on this channel are the opinions of the creator only and do not constitute legal, trading, investment, or financial advice of any kind. Investing carries a high level of risk and the majority of retail clients lose money. Do not invest in capital unless you understand the risk and you are prepared to lose it all. Right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and what a week. Okay, we made it through the week. It's finally Friday and to be honest, it's been quite an unusual week. I wanted to today spend some time revisiting the simulation idea and if you know, you know. If not, I'm about to explain it. Then I want to talk a little bit about the VIX and some potential trade setups that I see brewing in the not too distant future and then I'm going to spend a little bit of time just covering the charts because as I said about a week ago, I said, look, there's a lot of uncertainty. I want to get flat. I want to get out of the way. And if momentum returns, again, I will have no emotion, no bias. I'll hop back in. Okay. But I wanted to protect against downside risk. I'm happy that I did that. Again, I am here to stress, not to blow my own trumpet, but for your guys sake. Okay. Pay attention to who can manage risk, who can pivot on a dime to new data as it presents and who online instead is just saying buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip has no risk management. And particularly if you noticed any of your favorite influencers online, disappear for family issues, go silent for two weeks or whatever, take a note of that, okay? Because those people will again disappear when times get hard. And as you're about to see, times are probably gonna get hard in the not too distant future. So I know I'm saying a bunch of different things at the same time here. I am saying that we're about to get long and everything is about to go up probably. And then I'm also saying that once again, we're gonna have another type of 2007 type scenario potentially in front of us. And my point here is, as we get that, the camel crew will again show no emotion, no bias, not be married to any idea and be able to react to that as it occurs. But many of the people that demonstrated this week, they have no idea how to manage risk and no idea how to actually read charts objectively. Those people again will be telling you to buy the dip the whole way down. And as you're about to see from this blueprint or I'm kind of laughingly talking about it being a simulation repeating, although on a personal level, I do kind of believe there's an element of truth to that. But what you're about to see, okay, is if this thing continues to play, then the camel crew has the blueprint. So shout out to OV Crypto here who spotted this, who made this spot all the way back at the 3rd of August. What we've got on the top here is the NASDAQ back in 2007 and the VIX on the bottom. Now, just in case you haven't seen this, okay, what happened was we had the first angle, we had the second angle, the NASDAQ briefly violated it and recovered it only to go on and set a third and final blow off top angle before the end and a big global financial crisis and a, the great recession, right? That second angle violation also occurred on a big VIX spike. When I said earlier about kind of joking about this being a blueprint or a simulation type idea, okay, this top was just a few days away from the current top. This low was just a few days away from the current low. We have got a Fed rate cut coming up as I'm gonna show you on the exact same day as back when we were in 2007. And we even got the VIX spike all to occur at the same time. And once more, okay, the low here was roughly one-tenth of the current low. The high here was roughly one-tenth of the current high. So pretty wild the way this thing has been repeating almost to the tick and on the exact same dates. So when we look at the 2024 charts, you can see, again, we had the second angle violation occurring on a VIX spike right around 10 times the price, 10 times the low, and very, very close in terms of the dates that the top and the bottom occurred on. And so at the time, the question was, will this simulation continue to repeat? Will we see a quick reversal, recovery of the second angle, and will we go on to set a third and final blow off top angle whilst the VIX does something like this, okay? Now, when we take a closer look, having seen a whole new week's worth of price action, you can see that not only have we started to recover the second angle, but we have also made a technical repair by breaking out the downward slope in red resistance line. So the question is, is the third angle pending? And again, just to show you how ridiculously similar this is to 2007, okay? Here's the Fed cut, or I should say the FOMC on the 18th of September, where we are expected to see a 50 basis point cut, or at least I should say a 25 basis point cut. Clicking back to 2007, look at the date for the FOMC meeting, okay, the 18th of September, and they did indeed cut 50 basis points. So this is incredibly similar. And of course, things don't have to play out the same way, okay? Things can change, they can change quickly. But the big thing at the moment is, it's right until it's wrong. This has been playing out to the tick, almost on the exact same dates, as I said, almost at the exact same price levels, just 10x higher. And so I don't see any reason to doubt this until the market proves us wrong. And if that is the case, then what we should see is continuation, okay, a third and final angle, a 50 basis point cut, perhaps, on that 18th of September meeting. And then ultimately, and this is the key part, a sell signal should 
flash up here with a third and final angle violation to the downside. This, if it is to occur, will be me both taking profit and flipping short, looking for something like this to unfold. And keep in mind, this is not a new idea, okay? We have been calling for this kind of thing since I've had the channel the entire way up from the lows. We've been trading in and out of this thing. This is only the second time I went flat in the NASDAQ and the S&P, okay? The first time I went flat was back here. So we did well at catching this. We went flat for a bit and we're thinking to ourselves, well, something better change and it better change quickly. It did, it broke out, we got back in. And then I went flat here again because it, once more we were presented with uncertainty. But now we've seemingly recovered it. Now it looks like we're looking to go and find a third angle. I'm more than happy to hop back in again, right around the level I exited at, albeit slightly higher in exchange for protecting against downside risk and looking to catch that third and final angle before ultimately getting to flip short and see if we can actually short the top. So this current setup, if it's going to continue to play out, like I said, should tell us to expect a third and final angle and a breakdown. I put out a level three members video yesterday and I was saying this is actually a godsend, okay? Whether you believe in God or not, this is an absolute gift because if what was going to happen from here was we were going to go into some kind of C19 plunge, okay? Then that would have been much more difficult to deal with than if we've got a third angle loading, okay? Number one, it gives us, like I was saying yesterday to the members, an opportunity to catch this last leg. Number two, it gives us a very, very, very clear and easy to identify sell signal once we lose that third angle. And that also gives us a nice short opportunity with a stop just above wherever the high forms. So this is a very, very, very nice gift from the market, from God, whichever way you want to frame it. And it also means that nobody missed the VIX trade. OK, this is highly unusual to see the VIX recover all the way back down in a single wick. This almost never happens. In fact, it has never happened, as I'm about to show you. But again, there's the silver lining here, because if we're going to continue to do this, OK, then we didn't miss the VIX long. We can actually still get behind this trade and catch the VIX as that third and final angle is getting ready to break down. So again, it goes back to what I was saying about pay attention to who is trading like a professional here and who is just blindly buying the dip. A lot of people have gotten away with malpractice. A lot of people have seen this and go, ha, told you so, buy when there's blood on the streets, okay? But the reality is, it is absolutely fair to say no one has ever seen this before because it has never happened before. This is the most epic VIX crush in history, okay? Normally when you get a spike, and remember this is the third highest VIX reading ever, and normally when you get a spike like that, it takes months and months and months to calm itself back down. It takes months and months and months to calm itself back down. These are monthly candles here, okay? This huge wick, <laughs> has never been seen ever in history before. So yes, it caught the season traders out and the retail managed to get away with it. But I can assure you, okay, the next time this thing spikes, it will not wick back just like that. It will indeed look an awful lot like this where it takes months and months and months to repair and it will likely have multiple spikes, okay, on the way down. So again, I am here to suggest you pay attention to who the traders are that can pivot their stance when presented with new data. Again, I'm asking you to pay attention to who it is that is capable of managing risk and protecting against downside. The next time this happens, okay, it likely is not going to stop for a very long time. And again, I want to draw your attention to 2007, okay? Second angle violation, recovery, third angle, breakdown, breakdown, GFC. All of this occurred with a September 18th 50 basis point cut. What have we got today? Second angle violation, looking for a recovery, looking for a third and final angle before a rate cut on September 18th. So a huge opportunity here to both catch this, okay, and exit and flip short if you're the kind of person that wants to short this thing. And of course, as I've been saying earlier, okay, this is not really news, okay, to the Camel Crew have been well on top of this for a long time. We've been telling it to the bond market. We knew the cuts were coming around August, September time. We were speculating they might even come as early as July. Of course, the Fed has dug in its heels and it's not going to be cutting until September, but the bond market is now forcing the Fed to cut in September. And as the Camel Crew have known for a long time, these are, will not be cuts into normalization. These will likely be cuts into a slowdown, which is synonymous with major market tops in the risk assets. So perhaps one final squeeze, okay? Like I said, perhaps a gift has been bestowed upon us. Perhaps we actually do have an opportunity here to exit at the top. It seems too good to be true, to be completely honest. But like I said, I can imagine what's gonna happen is once we actually get up there, assuming we do, okay, and we break this third angle, very few people are gonna wanna short here. Most people have been trained and conditioned to ignore the VIX spike that will be occurring here. And once again, everyone will be saying, buy the dip, okay? Catch the falling knife, and they'll be doing so the whole way down. So what a wild time to be alive in terms of the charts, okay? Right now, the S&P 500, as you can see, is back above its second angle. So I have run out of reasons to be defensive here, 
I've completely run out of reasons. I wouldn't be surprised if we get some kind of rollover and then a go. Something like this would make sense to me. And if we do, that rollover, that retest, would give me a nice place to put the stop loss below. There is still risk based on the cycles, but I do think there's possibly a chance we just forced a slightly early weekly cycle low that will end up left translating. Something like this, third and final angle, and then we get the rest of the weekly cycle spent in a decline. So I think this is possibly what's going on here. And I am currently looking for entries. I could see myself putting on a position. Here is that fractal, by the way, from the GFC, okay? The 2007 last third and final leg before we end up going full meltdown, full recession. So something like this would make a lot of sense, okay? If I zoom in here, you can see we're probably gonna make the final line of repair in blue today. And then that's why the long is queued here. So I would think I'll probably have a long on for the NASDAQ today. I'm thinking that's where I'm going to start to increase my exposure as we try to capture this third and final leg. If we do get some kind of breakout retest resumption, then I will be using that retest and resumption to increase exposure probably on the S&P. So if it goes like this, right, then you can see me add a long for the S&P and continue to build that exposure slowly, looking for something like this to unfold. And the Dow Jones is probably going to give us a buy signal setup by breaking out of this downward slope in red resistance line in the next few sessions. So again, I could see myself having a trade entry, something like this in the not too distant future, and similarly looking to catch that third and final blow off top angle. So you can see ultimately, there's no real changes to the plan. I've been saying the same thing over and over again up until this prior week. It was only in this prior week that I decided to lock down some gains, protect against downside, and wait for momentum to return. But like I said earlier, I've run out of reasons to be defensive here. Okay, if we can break out of this downward slope in red and start to go into a third angle, then I want to be able to catch that. Like I said, for the S P, you know, it's recovered its second angle. We've run out of reasons to be defensive here. It's time to look for that third and final angle once more. And for the NASDAQ, something like this makes an awful lot of sense. And then of course, as we start to set this third and final angle, it will be important to be getting ready to exit the market, flip short on any third and final angle violation and expecting a lot of downside. Of course, if we do manage to get short on a trend line breakdown, okay, so let's say the first trade looks something like this. And then the short trade looks something like this. I'm using the fractal as the guide here. Okay, stop above the highs, target and lower down. Of course, that doesn't mean we can just go away and go fishing, okay, and wait for a recession to unfold for a year and a half. It's entirely feasible, okay, that we'll do something like this and then end up having to cover this short because there's more gas left in the goose, okay? Everything and anything is still gonna be on the table. The base case will, of course, be in line with the melt-up chart that we do something like this, but that does not mean, again, that we can just go short and walk away from the market. We will still have to continue to take it one day at a time, continue to have no emotions, no bias, and continue to check in on the base case hypothesis to make sure that this is indeed what is unfolding, the latter half of this melt-up chart, which is the global deflationary bust and a recession that will need as much care, attention to detail, and daily checking in on the hypothesis as the rest of this move required. So again, it's just another day in the office, really, okay? Another day in the office. Like I said, it's the second time we've been flat in this entire move, so that's not bad at all, really, particularly if we have got one final squeeze. And like I said, what a gift from the markets to be able to exit the markets and potentially even enter some shorts whilst longing the VIX in line with what is written here. So overall, happy days, okay? As ever, I want to continue to build my exposure gradually. I don't want to be just all in and on a breakout in case that what we're about to do is form a lower high and then go and find a weekly cycle low. So I'm going to gradually build the exposure up, allow some trades to move into profit first to finance the risk on additional trades. It's going to be the same stuff we always do. We did manage to keep hold of our Russell 2K position from the lows. So we moved the stop up again to protect against downside, but ultimately it never broke structure, unlike the rest of these indexes, which all did. And to me, it looks like the Russell 2K is getting ready to fire off higher up towards about 2700 i said anything above 2700 i would consider successful i think gold and silver are in a weird situation where the cycles are out of alignment i think gold is about to find a daily cycle low any any day now perhaps next week and silver may well have already just found one here so I'm looking to get hold of a silver trade in the not too distant future. I'm also looking to potentially play the silver junior miners. Again, I'll cover this and some other miners in the members section. And Bitcoin, if Bitcoin can get a breakout here, I could see myself trying along. I could see myself trying along on the thesis that this indeed is a half cycle low inversion and a new weekly cycle. We will need to see momentum return. But if we really are in that third and final angle moment, okay, if this is all that is left, and like I said earlier, I have no reason to doubt this is the case. This has been the base case hypothesis, hasn't it? The entire time, you know, right here in the S&P. <laughs> it's easy to say if you just found the channel in the last few days, well, Camel, you, you flip bearish and all of this, right? But the reality is, like I said, I've, I've been super bullish the whole way up. I've been flat twice. And the whole time we've been hoping and praying that we would get a third and final angle. And if we've got a third and final angle, 
which like I said, there's no reason to doubt it, then it should be something like this that comes next in line with the downside portion. And so the question is, okay, why is Bitcoin not taking part? It either, okay, that was the left translated cycle top, <laughs> or, or what we're about to do is one, two, three, four, five into that third and final blow off top angle as well. So I think we're gonna be looking and hoping that momentum can return to Bitcoin too. Okay, I see no reason why it can't. It spent plenty of time. That should be an inverted weekly cycle low. We should be looking for something like this now. And of course, if that's gonna show up, it should show up in the next few days. If of course it shows up in the next few days, then I do wanna be long in here, something like this target in 100k. So just a quick recap, okay, looking for longs in the indexes, looking to build that exposure slowly and gradually as always, looking to allow the initial profits to finance the risk on additional trades. Gold, I think, is about to find a weekly cycle low and silver and the miners, I think, have possibly already found theirs. And then Bitcoin should be getting ready to do Bitcoin things, either that or we all miss the top, apart from a few people that <laughs> missed the entire move and then successfully called the top. But it is what it is. As ever, I remain cautiously optimistic here. And I also think there's going to be some trade setups for some of the crypto related equities as well in the not too distant future. Again, if you're a level three member, look out for that. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow to do the deep dive. And I hope all of you have a fantastic weekend. Until the next time, take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.